it's Lisa. I started this page weeks ago and I had to put it aside. The place in my work craft room that I used to just lay things out uh, has now turned into a sewing area so I just had to put it in the box where all the papers came from. I piled everything up in there. And when I pulled it back out again this week, I thought, boy, am I glad I started videotaping this page because I don't remember exactly what I was going to do. Went to my computer, pulled up the videos, and there's no sound. <laughs> the, the, it starts out and there's like 15 seconds of me talking and then it's just cut off. And the, the video froze. So I don't know what happened. It was when taking the video or downloading it or whatever, but something went wrong. So I don't have anything to show where I was and what I was doing, except that I had a second video where I had the photos sort of arranged. And so I had gotten that far and I knew which papers I picked out and it's kind of coming back to me. What I'm doing with these uh, photos, these were taken on a trip in July that my husband and I made. Um, and we went to uh, Falling Water, which I'm still going to do the pages on that eventually. But on our way up, we stopped at this lake, Summersville Lake. And it was so beautiful, we stopped there again on the way back to do a hike. And it's a huge lake in West Virginia. And this is one view of it. And there's lots of other views of it. It's just gorgeous. Um, my husband wanted to get his Lifetime National Park Pass for seniors. They were going up from $10 to like $80. So um, we stopped there and we got his park pass and it was just so beautiful that I, we, I wanted to stop on the way back and do a hike. And on our way back, we had a little rain. And you can see what's happened here with these pictures. This is us uh, when we first arrived back that that last day and just, you know, some posed pictures. And then there we are in the rain. Apparently rain makes us really happy. I was following the rules now. I, I was, there was just a lot of parking area, but this, the area closest to the hiking trail was designated for uh, fishing, for people who had trailers on the back of their vehicles in these real long spaces. So I didn't park there. I parked up where the cars were. And when we came back, it started raining on us at the very end of the trail, and we got wet running through the parking lot. It's really how we got wet. So by, by, and there wasn't a soul in that parking lot. I could have parked there, nobody would have cared. But, you know, I was following the rules, and that's what I get following the rules. I got wet. Um, what I decided to do with papers here, first of all, the, the background papers. This, this is sort of a two-pager, but then again, I have two different stories to tell. I have, you know, the pretty lake and the hike, and then I have the, you know, how we got wet. We spent a good deal of this particular trip getting lost, going the long way on a hike or missing a turn on the road, that kind of thing. And on this particular day, we didn't get lost, but we got wet, and that's what I want this page to be about. For background paper, I have two sheets here from Stamping Up. They were part of a paper collection I've had for a long time, and I've been saving them for when I needed a two-page layout. This, they're going to be my background paper, although the right one is going to get covered by quite a bit of this My Mind's Eye paper. And I think what I had decided on were these sheets. Um, I don't think I'm going to use this uh, one. It's a really pretty paper, but I don't have this color really much in anything. So I think I'm going to use these two sheets and like this sort of soft one. And then I like this blue and white stripe that sort of uh, denotes the rain to me. So I think we're going to do um, a couple of sections here with the paper. And I have this yellow pulled out, I believe, because I had these uh, chipboard pieces that also came from my mind's eye that I had pulled out that I wanted to use. I thought that you or my sunshine was appropriate. And there may be some others. I'm going to have to go through here and see if there's anything else that came out that's, that's fallen down in the box. Um, but I wanted a little bit of yellow to sort of tie this together. So that's going to be my accent color. So we've got the blue-greens and then a little yellow to brighten up the page. And we'll show off these really pretty photos. I don't think I'm going to mat the back of these photos because there's so many of them. If I mat them, you're not going to have any of the background left, and I don't think it's really necessary. So we're just going to do a photo collage over here, maybe tuck in a lot. I haven't decided where the journaling goes. I did not sketch this out, unfortunately, so um, I'm just going to have to try to figure out what will work now and sort of start over, I guess, in a way with the page. When you have something that's part way done, it, this happens to me with sewing. It's a thing in sewing called 
called UFOs, un Unfinished Fabric Objects, where you start a project, you put it away, and then you come back to it months or years later, and you're like, well, what was I doing? What did I want to do with this? And that's kind of where I am with this page, is I had a plan. I could just start over, but I had a pretty good plan. So what was I going to do with it? Well, I'm going to dive into it now and start cutting some papers and see if we can uh, pull this together with a clever uh, title. While I'm gluing down all of these photos, I wanted to take just a moment to thank those of you who left condolence messages on my last video. I really appreciate that. It was very thoughtful. Now I'm putting down these photos just with my um, regular adhesive directly to the background. I'm going to add a little bit of chipboard over one of them for the kind of make a little extra accent for the selfie that we took together. And when I'm working on these, there's one point where I drop a photo on top of another, and boy, that tape runner adhesive really, really sticks, that ATG adhesive. And I end up with adhesive on top of the photo that I can't get completely off. And it's not that noticeable, but what I should do, of course, is reprint that photo and just put it over the top of this one at some point. Whether I actually do that or not is questionable. Now, for this page, I have trim down my papers about a half inch, uh, make them about a half inch smaller than the rest of the page, but I didn't get something quite straight, so I'm using some washi tape to kind of cover that up and create a little uh, border between the two pieces of paper. And I've decided to use stickers for my rather long title. I am I, I don't accumulate a lot of stickers, but when I do, I, I tend not to use them. And so some of the, that yellow one I haven't had that long, but these blue ones I've had for many, many years. And I've used a few, and it's time to go ahead and start using some of those stickers up. So, you know, when you know, my tape, my ATG gun went out on me, but I just grabbed some other adhesive. And we're going to do the photo, the before photo and the after photo of us getting rained on. And since that one that Tombow tape runner doesn't hold as well, I'm adding um, some glue dots to this also. So what it's going to say is we did not get lost, we got wet. And I didn't have quite enough letters, and I wanted to really make not stand out, so I found uh, some other letters. It took me a while to find something large that had... Uh, the vowels and the N and stuff in there that I needed. Um, and the one I found was kind of light, so I'm just going to add a little bit of yellow ink to it. And I started with my Stampin' Up! ink, and it's I, I don't think it really did enough. Well, it looks like I'm getting it. I was thinking this was one I had to switch over to the Distress inks. I did. I had to get some Distress Oxide out to get enough ink on there. I have gotten to the point where I love the Distress Oxide so much, that's what I'm going to buy from now on, and as some of my other inks, as they dry up, they're going out of here. I'm not doing re-inkers re for them because the oxides are so versatile and they ink so well that that's what I'm planning to use uh, going forward. But, you know, you don't always get every color that you want, but um, I think I can work with, with what I with the colors that I have. So I'm not going to do all these on camera, but you get the idea as I'm building from the center out on these letters. And there I was still short a T, and I had to take the word the and, and cut the T out. Now I've got all my letters on there, and they were coming up a little bit. And rather than adding glue to the back of all of them, I just sewed across them. I've seen other people do that, and it worked really, really well. Just one row of stitching across there, and everything held. Since I've moved a sewing machine up to my craft room, I can do a lot more of that kind of stuff easier than having to go all the way to the basement to sew. Adding some of these um, uh, pieces of chipboard and some journaling. I went ahead and moved a little washi tape over to the other page as well. And I remembered this yellow paper, kind of a little too late, uh, that I wanted to add some of that in. So I'm going to pull up one of the photos, the one with the, the prettiest picture of the lake, I think, and go ahead and mat that in the yellow to make it stand out a little bit more. And then the last thing, I need to get the date on here, and I've got a few stickers, and I also thought it would be kind of nice to have some enamel dots or something to kind of, again, tie the pages together and just add a little bit different shape and dimension to the page. I found this old, or it's not that old, this um, 
stamp with the date stamp and the words that I did not even remember having. I think I got it in a warehouse box and I've never used it before. So we're going to use some Distress Oxide for that on an old October Afternoon sticker. And a few, I believe these are Fancy Pants um, dots. We'll just throw a few of those on there on each of the pages and that will tie the two pages together, the one with the collage of all the photos and then the one that tells a cute little story. So here's our finished page. Um, I kind of thought I would put a title over here that just said Summersville Lake. Um, in hindsight, I kind of wish I'd made this a little bit larger print or I could still add the the text, I, I may do that, I may just print the text out and put it right here, I think that would be a good addition. So I have the location, but otherwise I, I like this title and I don't really want it to get lost, so, um, so to speak. <laughs> um, and then did the stitching through here so I didn't have to glue all those letters down. I've seen other people do that, but I haven't done it before and I really like that. Then we got to use quite a bit of chipboard, a stamp that I had never used from October afternoon. I'd forgotten I had, which is kind of fun. So I got a ton of photos here. What would we get? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven photos on this two-page spread. So we got lots of photos um, to really capture this location, which was, I put the date of July the 21st. This was actually a couple of days earlier, but most of this happened on the 21st. So um, that's, that's not really that relevant, but it's just kind of getting when the trip occurred. Um, probably more month than year is the most important thing. So thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you liked this two-pager. And I thought it was um, a fun one to do, and I got to use some of my supplies and get lots of photos done. Thanks so much. Bye.